Supreme Master Ching Hai's urgent message to all religious and spiritual leaders. Your Reverend Holinesses, Highly Reverend priest, Priestesses, Monks, Nuns of different faiths, my best wishes and humble prayers for your wellness in God's mercy. Though my time is tight and precious, as I am still in intensive meditation retreat for world vegan, world peace. But the urgent call of the planet and our world push me. I feel I must deliver some urgent messages to Your Holinesses and Reverends. As great spiritual leaders, you would also be aware of the devastation occurring on our planet, directly related to accelerated climate change caused by humans cruel behaviors and brutal habits, which is not so difficult to change once applying the principle of love. Please tell your believers this truth. Tell them that we must change, because we cannot say that we are the children of God if we murder other children of God. We cannot claim to be the future Buddha if we massacre other future Buddha, whether in human form or in animal form. We cannot say we love God and then destroy His creation relentlessly. And now we are destroying His planet. Please teach this again and again to your trusting followers who look up to you, to your holinesses and reverence as icons of compassion and saintly love. In God's love, thank you. Please keep watching to find out more. This is a highly recommended must watch. Warning, you might find the content herein disturbing, but the truth must be revealed. Your Reverend Holinesses, Highly Reverend priest, Priestesses, Monks, Nuns of different faiths, my best wishes and humble prayers for your wellness in God's mercy. Though my time is tight, and precious, as I am still in intensive meditation retreat for world vegan, world peace. But the urgent call of the planet and our world push me. I feel I must deliver some urgent messages to Your Holinesses and reverence. Well, if our house is on fire, we cannot say, I don't have time to take care of it. Our planet house is on fire. This letter serves the same goal anyway. It's supposed to be sent by post, but I, I read it is faster. In time of emergency, too much bureaucracy doesn't help. Your holinesses and reverence, uh, although the denomination seems varied, but we all serve one God, I believe. We are so grateful, I am so grateful, for the noble, devoted work 
your holinesses and all your reverence have been doing. Over the years, uniting people through spreading the Almighty's message of love and compassion among humans and all of creations. Thank you. May God forever be on your side. As great spiritual leaders, you would also be aware of the devastation occurring on our planet, directly related to accelerated climate change caused by humans' cruel behaviors and brutal habits, which is not so difficult to change once applying the principle of love. Please tell your believers this truth. Please keep telling them. Please keep reminding them. I know you did, but we could do more. Thank you. We just have to change. Tell them that we must change. We must change if we want to claim that we are human, that we are the future Buddha, that we are the children of God, because we cannot say that we are the children of God if we murder are the children of God, we cannot claim to be the future Buddha if we massacre are the future Buddhas, whether in human form or in animal form. As we read the Buddhist sutras, we know that even Sakamuni Buddha repeatedly incarnated innumerable times as animals, and we know in the Bible, God says that He even created a kind of vegetable for the animals to eat, and He created many things for us as well. If the animals means nothing to God, God wouldn't have created things for them to eat. Just like God loved us, so God created things for us to consume. He says that in the Bible, God created fruit, and vegetable in the field, and that, those shall be our food. We cannot say we love God and then destroy His creation relentlessly, and now we are destroying His planet. But with over 74 billion land animals alone, mercilessly mass sacred, for human consumption every year. The livestock raising industry and its byproducts are responsible for 87% of human caused greenhouse gas emissions. Not only we are destroying the planet by what we consume, but unspeakable atrocities are happening to innocent animals who have never done anything wrong. Moreover, God created animals to be our friends and helpers, not to be murdered and eaten in such a barbarous way. It is 21st century, for God's sake. In the Holy Bible, Job 12, 7, 8, it is said, But ask the animals, and they will teach you, or ask the birds in the sky, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, or let the fish in the sea inform you. So, the animals, the earth that God created, are wise, respected beings whose presence are great blessing to humans. But what unpardonable acts against God's law are we doing to our Heavenly Father's creation? We are destroying God's creatures from land to sea. The abominable cruelty inflicted on God's innocent creatures in lab tests, in livestock raising, in fishing, egg industry, milk, fur, cosmetics, etc., etc. Those industries are undeniably horrific and inhumane. It causes innocent, defenseless, gentle animals, our co-inhabitants, God's creatures, to be imprisoned and tortured 
molested in many ways without any chance to defend or to utter any call for help, even if they utter some call for help. Say the mother cows, the mother pigs were crying when their babies are taken away, bitten, kicked, and murdered. No one would care. Even a five years old kid would understand their emotion. It's worse than many hells. Imagine if they are our children, our relatives, our friends, or ourselves. They are living beings with emotions, with thoughts, feelings. Any of us who, who have spent time with a pet knows that they have their own personalities. They experience love, care, pain and sorrow, happiness and excitement, and loyalty, absolute loyalty. And there is no difference between a house pet and other animals confined all their life in horrendous, concentrated, tight animal factories, crates of fenced-in cramped spaces, rain or shine, no shelter, and during all kinds of weather, any wicked, unimaginable conditions, and whose lives are violently ended at slaughterhouses for human consumption, if we still think that we are human in this case. For more information, please also watch the following recommended documentaries, such as award-winning Conspiracy, Earthlings, Dominion, and award-nominated What the Hell, etc., etc. Also download free of charge from Crisis to Peace at crisistopeace.org. In all the major religions, there are commonalities such as the principles do unto others what you would have them do unto you, and those shall not kill, ahimsa, meaning nonviolence, etc. Obviously, the eating of any kinds of animals, sentient beings, is absolutely forbidden in all main belief systems and holy teachings. Yet, too many of God's children or religious believers are not following these basic guidelines because we have been led astray by misconceptions that we need to eat the flesh of animals, fish, eggs, and milk to be healthy. The opposite is true. It has been proven in scientific and clinical studies that consuming animals causes innumerable diseases in humans such as cancers, all kinds of cancers, and heart diseases. Thus, early death and endless sorrow, suffering before that, not just to the patients, but to their relatives, friends, family members, and loved ones. It's time now to awaken and change these physically and spiritually unwholesome, unhealthy, cruel habits and the utmost atrocity involved. Our original diet, as per the Garden of Eden, is the vegan diet. It promotes both physical and mental and spiritual well-being. We can live happy, healthy lives, thriving purely on plant foods, actors, actresses. Athletes, sportmen. Martial art champions. medical doctors, scientists, 
Nobel Prize winners, etc., are glowing proof of a healthy plant-based diet. This also adheres to "Thou shall not kill" or "Ahimsa," mean no violence. Whereas eating animals goes against this commandment from God, even if we are not the ones doing the killing, we cause others to kill for us. The animals suffer and die just the same, just for our meal, which we can replace with any other plant-based food. And nowadays, even much more so easy. Thus, our being, due to murdering animals, is drenched with blood of the innocent on our hands. Please teach this again and again to your trusting followers, who look up to you. To your holinesses and reverence, as icons of compassion and saintly love, so they would listen to you. We cannot let Satan or Maya, the devil, or the negative force, continue to lure us astray against God's will and against our innate intelligence. And compassionate nature. Before continuing this letter, I will read a few examples of the prohibition of animals flesh eating in the main world religions. Just in case someone else also is listening, someone else who has forgotten the religious commandments of their own religion. So first, I will read it in alphabetic order. The Baha'i Faith, regarding the eating of animal flesh and abstinence therefrom, know thou of a certainty that, in the beginning of creation, God determined the food of every living being, and to eat contrary to that determination is not approved. Selection from Baha'i writings on some aspect of health and healing. Buddhism. All meats eaten by living beings are of their own relatives. Lankavatara Sutra, Tripitaka number six seven one. Also, after the birth of the baby, care must be exercised not to kill any animal in order to feed the mother with meaty delicacies and not to assemble many relatives to drink liquor or to eat meat, because at the difficult time of birth there are innumerable evil demons, monsters, and goblins. Who want to consume the smelly blood by ignorantly and adversely resorting to the killing of animals for consumption, they bring down curses upon themselves, which are detrimental to both the mother and the baby. Christi Gaba Sutra, Chapter Eight. Another one. Be careful during the days immediately after someone's death, not killing or destroying or creating evil karma by worshiping or offering sacrifice to demons and deities. Because such killing or slaughtering committed, or such worship performed, or such sacrifice offered, would not have even an iota of force to benefit the dead, but would entwine even more sinful karma into previous karma, making it even deeper and more serious. Thus, delay his rebirth to a good state, or even send them speedily to hell. Karma means. Retribution, as you saw, so shall you reap. In the Bible, it states so. As you saw, so shall you reap. That is the meaning of karma, in、uh, Sanskrit terms. Another one: It be shoes. Do not wear garments made of silk, the silk that is made from the silk worms, boots of local leather and furs, and refrain from consuming milk, cream and butter therefrom. They will really be liberated. If a man can control his body and mind, and thereby refrains from eating animal flesh and wearing animal products, I say he will really be liberated. Bhikshus means monks. Surangama Sutra, another one. If any of my disciples does not honestly consider that and still eats meat, we should know that he is of the Kandela's lineage. He is not my disciple. And I am not his teacher. Therefore, Mahamati, 
If anyone wishes to be my relative, he should not eat any meat. Kandela means killer or murderer. Lankavatara Sutra. Kaudaism. The most important thing is to stop killing because animals also have souls and understand like humans. If we kill and eat them, then we own them a blood debt. Teaching of the saints about keeping the ten precepts, abstaining from killing, section 2. Christianity. Meat for the belly and belly for the meat, but God shall destroy both it and them. 1 Corinthians 6.13, Holy Bible. Another one. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, ere it was too, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. Number 1133, Holy Bible. Confucianism. All men have a mind which cannot bear to see the sufferings of others. The superior man, having seen the animals alive, cannot bear to see them die. Having heard their dying cries, he cannot bear to eat their flesh. Mengxius, King Hui of Liang, Chapter 4. Dao Yuism. To have peace, humanity must first have peace with the animals. Do not kill them to fit ourselves. Then there will be peace among people. Nam Gokfak Temple. Essenes. I am come to end the sacrifices and feast of blood. And if ye cease not offering and eating of flesh and blood, the wrath of God shall not cease from you. Gospel of the Holy Twelve. Hinduism. Since you cannot bring killed animals back to life, you are responsible for killing them. Therefore, you are going to hell. There is no way for your deliverance. Adi Lila, chapter 17, verses 159 to 165. Another. He who desires to augment his own flesh by eating the flesh of other creatures lives in misery in whatever species he may take his birth. Mahabharata Anu, 115-47. F.S. Page 90. Another. O oh, best of kings, if the things acquired by injuring others be utilized in any auspicious act, they yield contrary results at the time of fruition. Devi Bhagavatam, 4th book, chapter 4, verse 32. Islam. Allah will not give mercy to anyone except those who give mercy to other creatures. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, hadith, another. Do not allow your stomachs to become graveyards of animals. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, hadith. Jainism, a true monk should not accept such food and drink as has been especially prepared for him, involving the slaughter of living beings. Sutra Kritanga. Judaism, and whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eat anything that has blood, I will even set my face against that soul that eateth it, blood, and will cut him off from among his people. Leviticus 17.10, Holy Bible, blood, meaning flesh, which has blood. Sikhism, those mortals who consume marijuana, flesh, and wine, no matter what pilgrimages, fasts, and rituals they follow, they will all go to hell. Guru Granth Sahib, page 1377. Taoism. Do not go into the mountain to catch birds in nets, nor to the water to poison fishes and minnows. Do not butcher the ox, track of the quiet way. Tibetan Buddhism. The offering to the deities of meat obtained by killing animate beings is like offering a mother the flesh of her own child, and this is a grievous sin. The supreme path of discipleship, the precepts of the gurus, the thirteen grievous sins, great guru Gampopa. Zoroastrianism. Those plants, I, 
Ahura Mazda, mean God, rain down upon the earth to bring food to the faithful and fodder to the beneficent cow, Avesta, etc. and etc. There are more, of course. These are just a few examples. For further info, please check suprememastertv.com. So, regardless of which faith anyone belongs to, all must keep the most important precept. Thou shalt not kill, ahimsa, non-violence. Now it's time for humanity to go back to how our Creator originally intended for all His children to live in dignity, respect, peace, love, and to be good stewards of our earthly abode. Please remind your faithful of all this and more. I know you did, but please repeat again and again and explain to them is utmost important for their own souls as well as for our planet, for our world. It's time for the suffering of all animals to end, as they have a right to live in peace, freedom and dignity with their loved ones in nature, just as God originally intended. Please help to rescue God's creation. Please help to end the suffering of innocence. We make war with each other, and we make war with animals. These are not right. These actions are not right. These actions are against God's commandment and will. Please remind your faithfuls. I trust in the wisdom of your holinesses and all your reverence to lead this great change. We must change. I trust that your holinesses and your reverence, all your reverences, to lead this great change, to promote the vegan lifestyle, which encompasses love, compassion, and respect for all beings and obeys God's commandments. Please promote it to all your clergy, monks, nuns, and all the faithful. The power of your entrusted position will lend a significant, effective encouragement for world citizens to follow your lead. Please be the hero of our time. Rescue all these innocent beings, our fellow co-inhabitants, co-animals, who have never done any harm, who are a blessing to our world who are wonderful, loving and kind to humans as well as to their own co-inhabitant animals. In our Supreme Master television, we have ample examples of that, of the animals' loving, compassion and kindness recorded from all over the world. Please tell your faithful to watch them. We cannot expect heavens when we create hell or condone hellless massacre of God's beloved creation in such a mass murdering, cold blooded way. We cannot expect heavens leniency if we destroy God's creation and have no mercy to other children of God, meaning the animals. Please do not ignore their horrendous plight. God knows their daily anguish. Heavens and earth witness their pain, their cries, shaken all heavens, and the hearts of many beings. Please speak for them. Please help them as this also helps our world to heal in the wake of climate acceleration. Your noble deed will be forever recorded by heavens and contribute to a benevolent atmosphere on our planet, to world peace and to the stabilization of the climate, which is important to our lives on Earth. Our lives also depend on your merciful act. The world citizens, the animals, and our children will forever remember your heroic, compassionate deeds and pray for your happy, 
prosperous, healthy, long life in the name of God. The ever-merciful heavens will be pleased. The all-loving God will pardon our sins and lengthen our lives as we pardon and lengthen our co-inhabitants' lives. The loving, kind animals. May God bless you, all your holinesses and all your reverence, and bless your holy mission abundantly. And may God bless our world. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. In God's love, thank you. The faithful or viewers may download this message free and send it to your respected religious leaders, family, and friends. God bless.